Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching you how to make a sleek cold shoulder balloon sleeve sweater dress. Wearing a pretty dress always puts me in a great mood, and with balloon sleeves you know this will be a comfy affair. Speaking of, if you're looking for something comfy to make, we've got you. We've got hundreds of modern crochet designs for every style with more coming, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 700 grams of yarn, and that's 1500 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5 and 6 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you could have any pet, what would it be? For me, I am a little bit more of a dog person, so I would definitely pick a wolf. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet. And double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 5mm hook and start by making a chain the length that we want the height of our collar to be. Now, I'd like for my collar to be just about 3 inches or 8 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 15. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do our first slip stitch row. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're gonna insert with a slip stitch. So insert your hook into that chain. And once we have those two loops in our hook, all we're gonna do is yarn over and pull through both of those loops, keeping in mind not to pull too tightly on our working yarn right after we finish our first stitch, because otherwise the following rows can be too tight to work into. So let's do the next one. Start by inserting your hook into that following chain, yarn over, pull through everything, remembering not to tug on our working yarn and just do one more. Insert your hook into that following chain and pull through everything. And continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're going to do our following row, which is now going to be a back loop slip stitch row. So from here, just chain one and flip our work. Next, we're going to insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row, and we're going to insert only in through that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. And from there, we're just going to yarn over and loosely again pull through everything on our hook. Let's do this again. Into that following stitch, insert your hook only in through that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, and then again, insert your hook in through that next back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything and continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now that we've made our way all the way down to the end of our row two, or our first back loop slip stitch row, we're just gonna get started on the following row, which is going to be another back loop slip stitch row. So at the end of every row for this portion, just chain one, flip our work, and then make your way all the way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of this row, chain one, Flip our work and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we can get a band that can stretch around our head and we, and we do want to make sure that we are stretching it because this will have a decent amount of stretch to it and we don't want to make this too big so go ahead and get these rows all finished up we aren't going to be doing any increases or decreases and we want to make sure that we end on a row count that is in multiples of 10. Alright, so I am back with the total length of my collar. I have a total of 80 rows and my width is just about 13 and a half inches or 34 centimeters 
and that is unstretched because remember, it can stretch quite a bit. But now that we have this, all we're going to do is seam our two sides together. So we're all going to start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front, which is my working yarn, and the back panel. And then once when our hook is in through both of those loops, we're going to yarn over and pull through everything. And now that we have that, we are now going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam. So how we're going to get that started is start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel. And then we're going to insert our hook only in through that front loop or the loop that's nearest to you. And then we're going to find that next available stitch into the back panel and then insert your hook only into that back loop or the loop that's farthest away from you. Now that we have those three loops, all we're going to do is yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Let's do this again. Into that next available stitch into the front panel, insert your hook only in through that front loop. Into that next available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook only in through that back loop. Yarn over, pull through everything. Let's just do one more. Into the next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook. Into that next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook. And when we have those three loops, yarn over, pull through everything. And continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. All right, so we are back. We have just made our way all the way down with our outside loop slip stitch seam. And the next thing we're going to do is single crochet along the edge of our collar. So we are next gonna be switching out from our five millimeter hook over to our six millimeter hook. So go ahead and insert your hook into your loop, chain one. And now all we're gonna do is put one single crochet into every side row. So start by finding that first side row. My first side row is this divot right here. All I'm gonna do is find that top loop, which this is mine. I'm gonna insert my hook into there and then insert with just one single crochet. Next, we're gonna find our next side row. Mine is this raised row. I'm going to find that top loop and then insert my hook into there with another single crochet. And let's do this set once more. Find your next side row, mine is this divot. I'm gonna find that top loop, single crochet once, and then find that next side row, mine is this raised row, insert into that top loop with one single crochet. And then that's it. We're gonna to continue to do this, making our way all the way around. Slip stitch into that chain space, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you guys back so we can get started on the body. All right, so I'm back and I have just finished up the single crochet row along the bottom of our collar. The next thing we're gonna do is insert our stitch markers to separate our front, our back panel, and then our sleeves, and then we can get started on the front panel. So as you guys can see, I've already got mine all finished up, so I'm just going to walk you guys through it. And the first thing we're gonna have to do is grab eight stitch markers, four of each color. And the first thing we're gonna do is insert our first stitch marker into any stitch. It doesn't matter which one, cause this is just the first one. But just to make it easier for myself, I did insert my stitch marker into that first stitch that I have. That's right next to my tail end. And then we're gonna place our second stitch marker into an even numbered stitch across the other side, making sure that this first stitch marker is on one side of the base of our neck and making sure that the second stitch marker is on the other side of the base of our neck. And just to let you guys know, I have a total of 20 stitches from my first stitch marker to my second and all I did from there is insert in my next stitch markers, is insert in my back panel stitch markers, making sure that they're 20 stitches apart as well into the back half. And then from there, I just made sure that the amount of stitches that we have from the front panel that reaches to the back panel is equal along both sides. So you guys may have to do just a little bit of tweaking, but we just wanna make sure that the front and the back panel have the same amount of even numbered stitches and then the armhole along both sides have the same amount of stitches as well. So just to give you guys my numbers really quickly, my front panel has a total of 20 stitches in between our stitch markers. My back panel has a total of 20 stitches in between my stitch markers. And then for my armholes, I have a total of 20 stitches for those as well, since I had a total of 80 single crochets. But once we have that all sectioned off, we're ready to get started on our front panel's underarm. So go ahead and put this away and then we can get started. So getting our front panel started, we're all going to grab our category four yarn, make a slip knot, 
And then we're all going to grab our six millimeter hook. And we're all gonna start by making a chain that is in multiples of three from our underarm that reaches down to where we want the bottom of this top to be. So cropped, normal sweater length or a dress. And I do want mine to be just a little bit longer. So I'm gonna start by making a chain that is 19 inches or 48 centimeters. So for me, that's going to be a chain of 60. And now that we have our chain, we're all gonna get started with our sedge stitch. So what we're gonna do is insert our hook into that second chain from our hook with a half double crochet and a double crochet. So we're gonna start by skipping that first stitch. We're gonna yarn over and then into that second chain from our hook, insert with a half double. So right after we insert our hook, all we're gonna do is yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. That's our half double crochet. Now we're gonna do a double crochet into that first stitch. So yarn over into that same chain, yarn over, pull through. Now that we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And now we should all have one half double crochet and one double crochet into that same chain. And this is gonna be the way that we always start off our sedge stitch. So let's do the next one. What we're gonna do next is skip the following two chains because if we work into either one of those, we're going to be accidentally increasing, which is what we don't want. So we're gonna skip one, skip two, and then into that third chain, we're now gonna be inserting with one single, one half double, and one double crochet. So all together, go ahead and insert your hook into that third chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, that's our single crochet, now let's do a half double crochet into the same chain. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, and then one more double crochet into that same chain. So yarn over, into that same chain, pull through, pull through two, and pull through two. So now all together we should have two sedge stitch sets. Let's do another one. Working on our third set, we're going to skip the following chain and the second chain, and then we're going to insert our hook into that following chain with a single, into that same chain with a half double, and then into that same chain with a double. Now we should have three sets. Let's just do one more. We're going to skip the following two into that next chain, insert with a single, a half double, and then a double, and then that's it. We're going to continue to repeat this sedge stitch set, making our way all the way down. So all it is is skip two stitches, into that following stitch, a single half double double, skip two, and then repeat. And I'll meet you guys back when we have just one chain left. So I've made my way all the way down with my sedge stitch. I have one chain left, and into this last chain, we're going to be doing an increase. So how that's going to work is just into that last chain, we're going to put one single, one half double, and then two double crochets. So pretty much the same thing as our sedge, but with an extra double crochet, but that is going to count as our increase. So into that last chain, insert with a single, into that same last chain with a half double, and then now into that same last chain, two double crochets. So there's my first, and then there is my second. And now that we have that increase, we're gonna get started on our following row. And we're only gonna be increasing into every other row. So into row two, we aren't gonna do any increases. So just start with a chain one and flip our work. So getting started on our row two, into that first stitch from our previous row, we're gonna insert with our first sedge stitch, which is always going to be a half double crochet and a double crochet into that first stitch. And right after that, you're going to be skipping two stitches and then inserting into that following stitch with our next sedge stitch. Now remembering that our second sedge stitch and onward is going to be a single half double and double crochet into that same stitch. So insert your hook into that following stitch with a single, with a half double, and then with a double all into one stitch. Now let's do just one more. We're going to skip the following two stitches Insert your hook into the stitch right after that, which is a single, half double, and then double crochet. And we're gonna continue to do this, making our way all the way down. 
And a really quick fun fact that I have when it comes to doing our sedge stitch, each of our sets is going to be worked into the previous row's single crochet. So just to show you guys, we're going to be skipping one, skipping two, like we always do. And then into that following stitch is going to be our next set. And we know that this is a single crochet because this is the lowest stitch from our previous set. So just into there with a single half double double and continue to do this until we have two stitches left. All right, so we've now just made our way all the way down to the end of our row two. This is going to be the bottom of our piece, so this needs to stay blunt. So all we're gonna do is end this row with a half double crochet. So yarn over, skip that second to last stitch, and then into that last stitch from our previous row, we're gonna insert with just one half double crochet. And now this bottom is blunt. Now let's get started on our following row, which is going to be another sedge stitch set. So just chain one and flip our work. So just to remind you guys, into that first stitch from our previous row, we're gonna insert with our first sedge stitch, which is always going to be just a half double, and then double crochet into that same first stitch. Skip two stitches, and then into the stitch right after that, a single, a half double, and then a double. And then I will meet you guys back when we have two stitches left because we will increase together just once more. So we are nearly finished with our row three. And for all of our odd number rows, we are going to finish with an increase, the same increase that we did when we ended row one. So let's get this started. So we should all have just two stitches left. So we're gonna skip that second to last stitch. And then into that last stitch, we're gonna insert with a single, with a half double, and then now two double crochets. So there's one double crochet. And then there is our following double crochet. And that is our increase. And from there, all we're gonna do is chain one, flip our work, and then do our sedge stitches, making our way all the way down. At the end of this row, since it will be the bottom, we're just going to skip that second to last stitch, half double crochet into the last. And the row right after that is going to be another sedge stitch row, making sure that we end on our increase that we just finished off with each other. And from there, we're just gonna to continue to repeat those two rows until this portion that we have reaches from mid underarm over to the base of our neck, because this is gonna be connected straight into the collar. So I'll meet you guys back right after we finish up an odd number row, and then we can get started on the body portion. All right, so I am back and I am all done with my underarm portion. Now I have a total of 11 rows. My width is just about four inches or 10 centimeters. And now since we all should have ended along the top, we're now going to make a chain that's also in multiples of three that reaches all the way up to the base of our neck. So from here, I just need a tiny chain of about two and a half inches or seven centimeters. So all I'm gonna do is make a chain of six and then we're going to reintroduce our collar. All right, so now that we have our chain, we can now connect it into our collar. So let's go ahead and reintroduce that. So my darker blue stitch markers is my front and my back panel. All I'm gonna do is insert my hook into my stitch marker stitch that is marked for my front panel. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through everything to connect it. Now from here, we are gonna to need to slip stitch into that following stitch, making sure that we're working towards our other front panel stitch marker. So let's get that started. So into that next available stitch that I have, I'm gonna insert my hook into there. I'm gonna yarn over pull through everything on my hook, and then I'm gonna flip my work, and then I'm going to do my sedge stitch, making my way all the way down again, starting by inserting my hook into that first chain, since this is my first sedge stitch. So yarn over, into that first chain, go ahead and insert your hook into there with a half double, and then insert your hook into that same first chain with a double, and from here, just like before, we're going to skip the following two chains and then into that third, start with a single and then a half double and then a double into that same chain. And we're gonna continue to do our sedge stitch, making our way down our chain. And then I will meet you guys back once we reach the body portion, just to remind you guys that each of our stitches is gonna be worked into the single crochets. All right, so we have made our way down our chain. We should have 
two chains left and then that following stitch should be our first single crochet from our body portion. So all I'm going to do is twist my work. We're going to skip one, skip two, and then into that following stitch. Our single, our half double, and then also our double crochet. From there, skip two stitches and then into that following stitch, a single, half double, and then double crochet. And continue to do this till we have two stitches left at the end of our row. All right, so we have made our way all the way down. We should have two stitches left, and since we're along the bottom, we're gonna need to half double crochet into that last stitch. So to do that together, we're gonna yarn over, skip that second to last stitch, and then into the last, insert with a half double crochet. And now this row is all finished up. We're just gonna get started on the following row, and then I'll meet you back at the base to show you guys how we're gonna connect it. So just to work our way up, chain one, Flip our work and then start by inserting your hook into that first stitch from our previous row with a half double crochet and then with a double crochet. Skip two stitches into that following stitch, a single, a half double, and then a double, and continue to do this, making our way all the way down until we have two stitches left. So we've made our way all the way back down towards our base. We should all have two stitches left. And all we're gonna do now to close off this row is do one half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. So we're gonna skip that second to last stitch and then into that last stitch insert with one half double crochet. And now that we're here, we do need to slip stitch it into the base. So start by finding that next available stitch into the base that we have. Insert your hook into there with a slip stitch. And now this row is all closed off. Now to get started on the following row, all we're gonna do is find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, and then now we can flip our work. And then into that first stitch from our previous row, insert with a half double and a double. Skip two stitches, and then into that following stitch, a single, a half double, and a double. Now continue to do this, making sure that we end this row on a half double crochet into that last stitch from our previous row. Chain one, flip our work, make your way all the way down to the base until we have two stitches left because I wanna close off that following row with you guys and then connect it into the base with y'all once more. All right, so we are back when we've made our way all the way up and we should have two stitches right before the base. So all we're gonna do is yarn over, skip that second to last stitch, and then into the last stitch, just insert with one half double crochet. And now this row is all finished up. So all we're gonna do is find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there to close off this row, and then slip stitch into that following stitch into the base to work our way up to the next row, flip our work, and then repeat. From here, just continue to repeat our two previous rows with no increases and no decreases, until we reach our following stitch marker, and then I'll meet you guys back so we can get started on our second underarm portion. All right, so I've just made my way all the way across with my body portion, and now we're gonna get started on our second underarm. So the first thing that we're gonna have to do is insert our stitch marker for the same amount of chains that we made when we made our chain all the way up to our collar. So if you guys have my numbers, I made a total chain of six. So from the top right here, I counted down six stitches, inserted my stitch marker, it should always be a single crochet stitch. And then from here, we're going to, since we all should have ended along the bottom, do our sedge stitches, making our way all the way up until we are five stitches right before our stitch marker. So we have just made our way all the way up with our sedge stitches and we should have one, two, three, four, and five stitches right before our stitch marker. Now what we're going to do from here is a decrease of four. So all we're gonna do is yarn over. We're going to skip that following stitch and then into the stitch right after that, we're going to insert, pull through, insert your hook into that following stitch, pull through, also insert your hook into that second to last stitch and also into that last stitch and pull through. Now all together we should have one, two, three, 
four, five, and six loops on our hook. So all we're going to do is yarn over and pull through the first five loops because we want two loops on our hook. And then once we have those two loops, just yarn over and pull through two. Now our first decrease row is all finished up. Now to get started on our following row, we're just going to chain one, flip our work, and then make our way all the way down with our sedge stitches because we're only decreasing into every other row. Once we reach the end of that row, what we're going to do is chain one, flip our work, and then do our sedge stitches, making our way all the way back up, leaving five stitches because I want to decrease with you guys just one more time. All right, so I've finished up my second underarm row and I've made my way all the way back up with my third, leaving the last five stitches. So here's one, two, three, four, and five, and we're just going to do another decrease of four double crochets together. So to get that started, we're all gonna yarn over, skip that following stitch, and then into that fourth to last stitch, insert, pull through, into that third to last, pull through, second to last, pull through, and then into that last stitch and pull through. Now all together we should have six loops on our hook. So from here we're gonna yarn over, pull through the first five, leaving two loops on our hook. Then we're gonna yarn over, pull through two. And that's it. From here we're just going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows as our other side. And once we do, go ahead and do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up the entirety of my front panel. And now we're going to do the back panel, but it's gonna be done exactly the same way as the front. So I'm just gonna talk you guys through it really quickly. We're all gonna start by making the same chain that we made when we started off our underarm. We're going to do the same increases and the same amount of rows as our front panel's underarm. We're going to do the same chain that we made when we're trying to reach up to our collar. And then we're going to slip stitch into that following stitch marker stitch along the back, making sure that we're inserting it in through the back panel stitch markers, not the armhole. And just work our way all the way across, finish up our second underarm portion, and we are all done. I'll meet you guys back once we have the entirety of the back panel all finished up. So I am back and both of my panels are all finished up. Now the next thing we're going to do is our side seam. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure the work is flipped wrong side out. We are next going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're just gonna be doing a single crochet seam, so let's just get that started. So start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and insert your hook in through there. And then we're gonna find that next available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook into there, and then single crochet them together. There's our first, let's do another one. Into the front panel, find that next stitch into the front. Into the back panel, find that next available stitch into the back, and then single crochet, and then that's it. We're just gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. So now that our work is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our shoulder band. So first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that work is flipped right side out. So if this looks a little funny, it's because our work is slightly at an angle and upside down, but only because we're going to be doing our first single crochet row for our shoulder band into the bottom of our collar. So what we're gonna do is insert our five millimeter hook into the stitch marker stitch that we have for our armhole or the stitch that's right next to our panel into the collar. And from here, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and all we're gonna do is work into the collar for the total width that we want our shoulder band to be. Now, I want mine to be just about an inch and a half, or three centimeters, so I'm gonna start by doing six single crochets. So now that I've put one single crochet into every stitch that I want my shoulder band width to be, we're now just going to do back loop slip stitch rows exactly like how we did the collar. So we're just gonna do the first row together. So at the edge of our row, we're going to chain one and flip our work. And now from here, just make your way all the way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of this row, chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. 
and just continue to repeat that row with no increases and no decreases until we have a shoulder band that can stretch around our arm and reach the other side of our collar, making sure that we end on an even number. I'll meet you guys back once we have that all finished up. All right, so I am back and I now have my shoulder band that I want. Now I have a total of 40 rows and now we're going to seam it into the back half of our collar. So what we're gonna do from here, since we all should have ended on an even number row, making sure that our work is still flipped right side out, you're now gonna be inserting our hook into that stitch marker stitch for our armhole or the stitch that's nearest to our panel. We're gonna insert our hook into there, yarn over, pull through everything, and now we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam, so the same seam that we did for the collar. So start by pinching the shoulder band and the collar together, and let's do the first one together. Now, just like how we did the collar, we're all gonna start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel, and then we're gonna find that next available stitch into the back panel. Insert your hook into that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, let's do this again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, pull through everything. And continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. When we don't, go ahead and do a chain up a one and cut. All right, so now that our shoulder band is all finished up, we can now get started on the sleeve, but the first thing we're gonna have to do is a single crochet row. So making sure that our work is still flipped right side out, meaning all of our seams are along the inside, we're now going to insert our six millimeter hook into that row that we have that's right next to our side seam and insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through. Now from here, we should have a few side rows to work into. All we're gonna do is alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row and single crochet into every stitch that we made. So let's just get this first bit started. After we've pulled our yarn through, we're going to chain one to secure. And then now we're going to find our first side row. This is mine right here. And I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop. So just insert your hook. And I'm just going to do one single crochet. Now into my next side row, which this is my next side row right here. I'm gonna find that top loop. And then insert my hook into there with two single crochets. So there's one and then into that same side row with my second single crochet. Let's do this one more time. This is my next side row. Find that top loop and single crochet just once. Find your next side row, this is mine, and then single crochet into there twice. So there's one, and then into that same side row with my second. And we're gonna continue to do this, making our way all the way up our underarm portion. Well, we don't have any more side rows left to work into, we should have just a few stitches to work into, so just put one single crochet into each of those stitches. Now I'll meet you guys back right before we get started into working into our shoulder band. All right, so I've just single crocheted my way all the way up and we're ready to get started on working into the bottom of our shoulder band. But now that we've done our last single crochet into the shoulder portion, we're just gonna insert our stitch marker into that last stitch so we know where this portion ends and where this portion is gonna start. Now from here, we're gonna be doing a decrease of two single crochets into every two side slip stitch rows. So I'm just going to turn my work over to show you guys how we're gonna do that. So doing the first decrease into our shoulder band, what we're gonna do is find that first side row. Now this little divot right here is my first side row. So I'm gonna find that top loop, insert my hook into there, I'm gonna yarn over and pull through. Now we're gonna to need to find that top loop for our next side row, which mine is this raised row. So I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop, yarn over, pull through. And now that we have those three loops on our hook, we're just gonna yarn over, pull through all three. Now that is our first decrease of two single crochets. Let's do that again. We're gonna find our following side slip stitch row, which mine is a divot. Find that top loop and insert your hook into there, pull through. And then into your next side row, which mine is this raised row, find that top loop as well. Yarn over, pull through. When we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And then that's it. We're just gonna continue to do this, making our way all the way down. And then once we do our last stitch into our shoulder band, I will meet you guys back, just to remind you guys that we are going to need to insert our stitch marker into that following stitch. All 
All right, so we are back and we have just made our way all the way across with our decrease of two single crochets along the bottom of our shoulder band. It's a little hard to see, but I have just worked into my last side row. Now from here, we're going to do the same thing that we did along the other side. So just one single crochet into every stitch and then alternate between one to two single crochet into every side row. And then we're gonna slip stitch into that chain space. The only thing that I wanted to remind you guys is once we do our next single crochet, when we're working down our shoulder, we wanna be inserting a stitch marker into there because we want it to match this stitch marker that we have right over here. So just start by finding that first stitch on this end, insert your hook into there with a single crochet, insert your stitch marker into there and then continue on with this row. I'll meet you guys back so we can get started on the length of our sleeve. All right, so now that our single crochet row is all finished up, we can now get started on the length of our sleeve. So from here, we're gonna wanna make a chain the length that we want our sleeve to be, keeping in mind that we will have a cuff and this does need to be in multiples of three as well. So I need my sleeve to be just about 10 and a half inches or 28 centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 42. All right, so now that our chain is all finished up, we're going to get started on our sedge stitch, making our way all the way down. So this is gonna be done pretty much the same way as everything else. So we're gonna start with the yarn over and then into the second chain from our hook, we're gonna do our first sedge stitch, which is going to be a half double crochet and double crochet into that same stitch. Skip two, so there's one, there's two, and then into that third, we're gonna insert with a single, a half double, and then a double. And from here, we're just going to continue to do our sedge stitch until we have one chain left, and then we're going to increase and connect it into the base together. All right, so we've just made our way all the way down with our first sedge stitch row. We have just one chain left, and now we're gonna do our increase together. So insert your hook into that last chain, and we're gonna increase the same way that we did for the body. So we're gonna start with a single, with a half double, and then two double crochets all into that last chain. And once we have that, all we're gonna do is connect it into the base. So we're just gonna find that next available stitch, insert your hook into there, and pull through everything with a slip stitch. And now this first row is connected. And if it looks like your row is ruffling a little bit, that's completely normal at all, even out once when it's seamed up. Now to get started on a following row, since we're along the base, we're gonna find that next stitch into the base, slip stitch into there to work our way up, flip our work, and also like for the body, we're only gonna be increasing into every other row. So just to get this row started, start by finding that first stitch from our previous row, insert into there with a half double and a double, and then make your way all the way down with our sedge stitch once more, making sure that now we're gonna end along the end, we're going to do a half double crochet into that last stitch. Now right after that half double crochet, chain one, and then do our sedge stitch, making our way all the way back until we have two stitches left, and then I'll meet you back to increase once more and also connect into the base. All right, so we've just sedge stitched our way all the way back and we're nearly at the end of our row three. You should have two stitches left and we're just gonna do an increase together. I'll let you guys do the rest on your own. So our increase is always going to be skipping that second to last stitch. And then into that last stitch, we're going to do a single into that same last stitch, a half double, and then into that same last stitch, two double crochets. So there's my first, there's my second, and now that we have that, we're just going to slip stitch it into the base. So start by finding that next available stitch that we have and slip stitch it into there to close off this row. And once we have that, just so we can start our way up to the next row, slip stitch into that following stitch, flip our work, and then continue to repeat our two previous rows until we make our way all the way up to our stitch marker stitch, making sure that we are working into that stitch. And then I'll meet you guys back to show you how we're going to work across our shoulder band. All right, so I am back and I've just finished up the increase portion of my sleeve. Now the last row that I did, I did work into that stitch marker stitch and now we're going to work across our shoulder band. And our shoulder band's gonna be pretty simple. We aren't gonna be doing any increases or decreases. So if you guys ended along the base, you guys are just going to slip stitch into that following stitch. So the same way that we've been starting up our next row when we're at the base, and then just work your way all the way down with our sedge stitches. 
with no increases and no decreases, remembering that we must end on a half double crochet. Now, since I have ended along the outside, I'm going to do my sedge stitch, making my way all the way back down. And even though we're working in towards the base, I am going to be putting one half double crochet into that last stitch because we need this to be blunt. So I'll meet you guys back once when I end my row right at the base, just to remind you guys how it's going to look and then how we're going to connect it into the base just once more. So I've made my way all the way back down with my sedge stitch row, and this is going to be the first row that I'm doing for the width of my sleeve. And as you guys can see, I did not end on an increase because we just need to do a half double crochet. And all we're going to do from here is find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, slip stitch up that following stitch to work our way up to the next row, flip our work, then do our sedge stitches, making our way all the way back down, ending on a half double crochet. And just continue to repeat those two rows with no increases and no decreases until we make our way all the way across and we reach that one stitch right before our following stitch marker. All right, so I am back and I've just made my way all the way across my shoulder band and I have stopped one stitch right before my stitch marker and now we're going to do the decrease side of our sleeve. So just to talk you guys through this really quickly and then I'll show you guys how to do it. We're only gonna be decreasing into the rows that are working into the base. So the same decrease that we did for the underarm portion when we did our front and back panel. So just to let you guys know, if you guys ended along the base, all you're gonna do is slip stitch up the following stitch and then do a sedge stitch row with no increases and no decreases. At the end of the row, chain one, flip your work, and then bring it all the way back down, leaving five stitches before our base. Now, since I actually ended on the outside, I'm going to do my sedge stitch row and I'll meet you guys back when we have five stitches left just to decrease together once more. So I've just made my way all the way down with my sedge stitch row and now we're going to do a decrease of four double crochets just like how we did for the body. So we're going to start with the yarn over. We're going to skip that following stitch. We're going to insert into that next stitch, pull through, into that third to last stitch, pull through, into that second to last, pull through, and then once more into that last stitch, pull through. From here we're going to yarn over, pull through the first five, yarn over, pull through two, and since we're at the base, we're just going to find that next available stitch and slip stitch into there. And then right after that, we're going to be doing another sedge stitch row with no increases and no decreases, since we're only gonna be doing our decreases into every other row, and then that's it. We're gonna to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. Then I'll meet you guys back so we can seam our sleeve together. All right, so I am back and I made my way all the way around with my sleeve. I don't have any more stitches left to work into and now we're going to seam our sleeve together. Now this is going to be a single crochet seam. So the same seam that we did for the sides, the only thing we wanna make sure is now that our work is flipped wrong side out, meaning our seams is faced along the outside because once we flip it right side out, we want all of our seams to be along the inside. So now that our work is flipped wrong side out, what we're gonna do is insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel and then we're going to pull through. And since we already know how to do our single crochet seam, I'll show you guys how to do just one. So start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and insert your hook. Next, we're gonna find that next stitch into our back panel, insert your hook, and then single crochet, and then that's it. Continue to do this, making our way all the way down. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our sleeve is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our cuff. And if your sleeve is a little big, don't worry about it, it is going to cinch right now. So the first thing we're gonna do is insert our five millimeter hook into any one of our rows along the bottom of our sleeve, making sure that our work is flipped right side up. Next, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're going to be doing a decrease of two into every two side rows that we have, so let's get that started. So to do our first decrease together, we're gonna to find our first side row. This is my first side row right here, so all I'm gonna do is insert my hook into that top loop, pull through, and then we're also gonna insert our hook into our following side row, which this is mine right here. So I'm gonna insert my hook into there, pull through, and when we have those three loops on our hook, just yarn over and pull through all three. Now there's our first decrease, let's do this again. Start by finding that following side row. This is my following side row right here. So I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop and pull through. Find your next side row, this is mine. Insert your hook into that top loop, pull through, 
yarn over and pull through three. And then that's it. We're going to continue to do this, making our way all the way around and then slip stitch into that chain space. So we've just made our way all the way around with our single crochet row. Next thing we're going to do is make a chain the length that we want our cuff to be. Now I'd like for my cuff to be just about two inches or five centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 10. So now that we have our chain, you're going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So just insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch and just continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now going to connect it into the base. So all we're going to do is find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there to close off this row. And then from here, we're going to need to slip stitch up the following stitch into the base to work our way up to the following row. Flip our work, and now we're going to be doing back loop slip stitches. Remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch again, and that's it. At the end of this row, we're going to chain one. Flip our work and continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. So basically the same way that we connected the sleeve into the base. So go ahead and just continue to repeat these two rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can seam our cuff together. All right, so I am back and I made my way all the way around with my back loop slip stitch rows and now we're gonna seam it. And this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam, so the same seam that we did for our collar. So we first want to make sure that our work is flipped right side out. And then we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Now from here, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything. And since we already know how to do the seam, we're just going to do the first one together. So into the front panel, we're all going to insert our hook into that next available stitches front loop. Into that next available stitch into the back panel, we're gonna insert our hook into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. And once we have those three loops, all we're gonna do is yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. We're just gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so we are back and we have just finished up both of our sleeves and cuffs, and now we're going to do our bottom band. So what we're gonna do is first make sure that our work is slipped right side out, and then we're gonna be inserting our six millimeter hook into any one of our side rows that we have along the bottom. Now from here, we're gonna be inserting our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and we're just gonna be putting one single crochet into every side row that we have, making our way all the way around. So just to do the first one, we're gonna find that first side row that we have. This is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook with a single crochet. Next, find our next side row. Insert your hook into that top loop with one single crochet, and that's it. Continue to put one single crochet into every side row. When we don't have any more left to work into, slip stitch into that chain space, and then I will meet you guys back. So now that we made our way all the way around with our single crochet row, we're now going to do a slip stitch band. So the same thing that we did for the cuff. So we're all gonna start by making a chain the length that we want our bottom band to be. Now I want mine to be just about two and a half inches or seven centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 10. And now that we have our chain, we're gonna block off that last chain, do a chain one, and then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch, and then that's it. Remember not to tug too tightly on our working yarn right after we finish every stitch, but continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. When we reach the end of the row, we're going to slip stitch it into the base the same way that we have been doing for our sleeve and for our cuff. And then our following rows are going to be back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. From there, we're just gonna continue to repeat those rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And then I will meet you guys back when we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. And then we can seam it all together. All right, so I am back and I have just made my way all the way around with my back loop slip stitch rows. I don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're just going to seam it together. 
So just to remind you guys, we are going to be doing an outside loop slip stitch seam, and we do need to make sure the work is first flipped right side out. Next, we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And then all we're going to do is yarn over, pull through everything to secure, and since we already know how to do the seam, we're just going to do the first one together. We are all going to start by inserting our hook into that first available stitch into the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. And then we're going to find that next available stitch into the back panel and then only insert in through that back loop. And then once we have those three loops on our hook, just yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. We're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up seaming my bottom band and I am all done. The last thing we're going to have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.